Yeah, and I think we had originally planned on doing and on, on talking on this point a little later in the meeting, um, but when we looked at uh, the different things that people wanted to showcase, um, what people wanted to talk about from um, how we design OpenMRS3, how do we move to more design-driven um, product to how do we implement, um, what is the strategy for implementing OpenMRS? Um, we, we realized that, that we, we kind of needed to tackle this topic earlier than anticipated. Um, so, we, so this is going to get into, this next session is really going to get into um, this idea of, of building um, shared assets together. Um, so, you know, what does it mean to do this? Um, and, and we're going to look at three different, three different kind of questions here. And I, I hope everybody will please put their comments and, and um, questions in the chat as we, as we go along. We're going to talk a little bit about why we, we why should we build shared assets together? Um, what have we been hearing from partners, from implementers um, over the past year? Uh, what exactly do we mean? by shared assets. This is a little bit of a new term that we've been starting to use in the community, but we want to really say like, well, what, what are these shared assets? What do we mean when we, we say shared asset? And then how and where do we, we build them together? Um, so so let's, let's start off like what with why should we build shared assets together? And I'm just going to draw on some of the things that I started here even a year ago in a session that we had around um, and, you know, how do we contribute? How do we collaborate together in OpenMRS? And, and, and what I've heard since then in a number of conversations um, with, with volunteers, with developers, with um, implementers on the ground. And, you know, in the center, it's, you know, the first thing, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Everyone's like, I want to make a positive impact on public health by contributing to a global good. That's a very high level strategic reason for building things together. Um, but then there are other, some, some other more specific reasons. So it's things like reducing siloed development and duplication of effort and making the most of, of really limited resources, you know, not only you know, at the country level with country budgets, but also among implementers having um, a lot to do with, with limited resources and and some have even spoken about the ways that distributing the responsibility for maintaining and sustaining shared OpenMRS assets really allows them to make the most of their limited resources and reduces the risk um, and that burden of, of having to maintain something that, that they have forked and taken out of the community. Um, and then I think more and more people are seeing that um, as we work together on shared assets, you're able to access a pool of increasingly diverse um, information technology professionals, whether you know, these are designers, developers, product managers, subject matter experts. Um, they're all, you know, it's, it's a way of, of kind of addressing those limited resource, um, resources by actually pooling talent. And then, and then we also hear that people really think, you know, see the value of having diverse perspectives inform the technical approaches, um, use cases, designs, and solutions. They're interested in making sure that they're, that whatever we build as together as a community will be adopted by multiple OpenMRS implementations, and that the way to do that is to make sure that multiple implementations are involved in actually building um, the solution we want we want to use. Um, and, and then there's been talk about um, creating and accessing a collection of reusable solutions. So, um, so all of this, you know, too, in the context of understanding our better landscapes, our more diverse landscapes and learning from, from, other, from each other's experiences. So there are a lot of different reasons why people think it's important for us to, to build shared assets together. Um, Nicholas, I see your hand up. Did you have a question or comment before we move on to the next piece? Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Yeah, I, I only wanted to echo what uh, my other Kenyan colleagues have uh, contributed to what, is, what OpenMRS is doing in Kenya. So recently, there is this uh, uh, this initiative where USID 
has partnered with the CDC to make uh, whatever is available this KGMR to be facility wide application. So KGMR is coming up with the OPD, IPD, uh, revenue collection and all those uh, suits of modules that will make it facility to work. So if you get time, you can get a demo to it and see what has gone into that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, on Esma said, there are no uh, developers in Kenya. And as as we're here, but uh, we are very few. We just need to be more. <laughs> okay. Well, Nicholas, thank you. You know, I think, you know, we heard, we heard you know, we're, their resources are limited. You're there, you're small in number, um, but we, we're also hearing about how people are seeing um, building things together, collaborating, co coordinating, contributing to, to a shared asset can, can help address that problem. Um, so, and, but we know at the same time that there needs to be some sort of, you know, effort to, to expand the numbers, um, figure out what, what people need to know so that you use your those resources you have strategically. Yeah. Um, so, so I think the the next thing to really kind of tackle is what exactly do we mean by by shared assets? Because I've brought that term up a few times, and and really we're talking about those things that multiple OpenMRS implementations can use. Um, that might be complex or extremely time consuming to maintain on your own. So it's using, using the, limited re the time of your limited resources um, to maintain something that we, we could be maintaining together. Um, solutions that, that should be supported and sustained um, via, via the community. So you know, what are some examples of, of shared assets? Um, the 3.x framework, um, shared core features like patient lists, EMR navigation, um, but it's also things like our technical approaches and guidelines. We develop those openly together as a community, um, and those are shared assets along with our QA frameworks and processes and tools, um, our community infrastructure. Um, this is something that we all share, we all benefit. We have this fantastic uh, Zoom room that we can come, come together in. Um, and then, you know, speaking to that capacity issues, you know, we can have shared assets that are that are in terms of those resources for those who want to advance professionally to build the capacity, whether it's as a developer um, or as, you know, maybe we could even see what what we can provide um, other other cadres of of technical experts like product managers or um, when it comes to QA um, people who want to become QA specialists. Uh, and then documentation, of course, is a shared asset. And even events like this is a shared asset. Like I said at the very beginning, um, this is a participant-driven meeting. Um, you make it happen. And, and so it is, it too is a, is a shared asset. Um, so, so a little like when we talk about building systems together, it's kind of like that question, how do you know what is a shared asset? And how do you know what is truly like implementation specific? Because just because something is a shared asset doesn't mean that it, it can't be extended or built off of to become, um, or that it rules out something that is implementation specific. So a shared asset might share, uh, solve a shared problem. Um, it usually has at least two organizations working on that together, right? And the idea that this will help um, the solution apply to multiple OpenMRS implementations and lead to greater adoption. Um, and, and it's something that the broader OpenMRS community anticipates using. Uh, so that would be a shared asset, uh, whereas a spe uh, implementation specific asset might be um, that a only a single organization is really working on that asset. Um, it's, they might be extending a shared asset to, to meet specific country implementation needs and requirements. So kind of making it uh, like working with that shared asset to make to really kind of own it in the country. Um, and it may feel substantially different to, to end users than, than the more generic general um, shared asset application. Um, I'm gonna actually ask Grace if, if she can walk us through and, and help us take a closer look at, at a specific example of shared assets um, and specifically like, what are shared 3.x assets? Um, Grace, do you mind walking us through this? 
Yeah, I'd love to. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's let's dive in. So in addition to the examples that Jen has been sharing so far, there are definitely some examples specific to our new 3.x front end. So for example, uh, a shared asset in the 3.x context is a tool that everyone uses, like the EMR navigation or uh, something like patient search. And the idea is that core features like these should be built together by more than one organization. The reason for that is because if only one organization builds a feature, it tends to be the case that other organizations are not as likely to use that feature in the future because number one, they weren't invested in the feature to begin with, but number two, there are shortcuts that we take for pragmatic reasons when we build a feature only for our organization. In contrast to a 3.x shared asset, you can have a uh, package or implementation specific asset. And um, some things you might notice in these kinds of assets are things like, um, you have a set of functionality, like let's say we were to create a special package just for one particular clinic in a particular location, you might have a special widget just for that clinic. And that's okay, but we go in with our eyes open that that widget probably won't be useful for another location. Now, um, there are cases where we might have something like an HIV testing services widget uh, or an HIV testing services concept package. These are things you could probably repurpose into a uh, HIV package that other people could reuse. The key point just to be aware of is uh, sometimes things will be able to be reused between organizations, but the key point is that collaboration means protection and sustainability of that feature in the future. Let's keep going. Next slide, please. So for example, uh, the 3.x framework and widgets and structure that have already been created do provide a foundation of shared assets. But your organization might need to use a specific package. Let's look at an example of that. Oh, I just lost your screen, Jen. And there it is. All right, next slide, please. Next slide, perfect, thank you. So uh, yeah, let's look at this example. So on the, in the foundation in our 3.0 EMR kit, we have things like the EMR navigation, the patient search, registration, program enrollment, the user experience of the forms and the functionality that enables patient lists. These are all examples of shared assets and we've had actually three, four, even five organizations working in the 3.x squad on these specific examples in real life. Now, on top of this, your organization might have an HIV care program that wants to apply the new ORI package for HIV testing services. So you would not only get the foundational 3.0 EMR kit, but you would also get uh, the, the package of HIV testing services related features. This is not something that you would want if you were running, say, a a uh, non-positive um, maternity clinic, but you certainly want it for your HIV testing services. So widgets like an HIV testing services widget specific for a patient chart about their HIV test history, this is something that you wouldn't want to apply in an NCD clinic per se, but you do want it for your HTS program. So that's how, that's an example of how a package can sit on top of the EMR. Packages can also include things like forms, data dictionary, concepts, and reports specific to that area, like HIV testing. And a package can have any kind of content. It could be content for a specific country or content like we see here for a specific program like HTS, NCD, PMTCT, and so on. Next slide, please. Great. So for example, uh, one other thing to keep in mind about things that tend not to necessarily be 
um, shared assets originally, they'll, they'll often extend a shared asset piece of functionality. So for example, the HIV testing services dashboard depends on the patient list functionality. So that uh, this is more about the patient list functionality as a shared asset. It's something that other widgets depend on to work properly. Next slide, please. Over to you, Jen. Great. Um, and I, I feel like this is just getting giving everybody a little bit of a taste. If you're wondering what what exactly are does the three point X framework look like? What uh, you know? What is where are we in terms of moving towards OpenMRS three point um, we'll, we have a session specifically on that design driven three point um, right after right after this and and you can see more about um, exactly what Grace is, is talking about. But for now, I wanna talk about, you know, get into some of the related questions. Okay, so we know what's a shared asset. Um, so we know what might be implementation specific. You know, that's kind of the first, one of the first steps in kind of figuring out um, what to even consider building together. But then it's like how, then we kind of have to figure out how exactly do we build these shared assets together? Um, and, and this is where um, I, I really want to kind of highlight some of the changes that have been happening, you know, in, in the OpenMRS community over the last um, several, several years now. Um, I, you know, we've seen that more and more organizations are developing and implementing OpenMRS than ever before. Um, we, we still value, you know, we still go back to our values of being user driven and open and transparent. Um, but with all of our growth, we, we've really found that we needed to make some changes to create new opportunities for leadership and really enable um, greater collaboration, um, greater opportunities, smoother ways of building shared assets together. And, and moving towards this new micro front end technology is one way of reducing some of the barriers, at least on the technology side, to um, building shared assets together. But, you know, just like just like we know that open MRS implementations don't happen in a vacuum on the ground, that there are a lot of um, governance and policy and financing and infrastructure um, considerations that affect how well open MRS is implemented on the ground. The same thing goes with building building shared assets. Um, it doesn't it doesn't magically happen in a silo. So I want to talk about some of those. Um, some of those specific collaborations and what um, considerations that make building um, these open MRS assets together easier and, and some of the changes that we've been doing in order to remove barriers that uh, we've run up against in the past. So, you know, the first thing, you know, I think we've, met, we've talked about this a little bit in past meetings, um, especially in our virtual meetings, smaller virtual meetings throughout the year. But we made an effort to really update our community model um, so that we have more smaller autonomous squads, you know, that can work together on specific solutions to a shared problem. Um, that's where we build things together so that those two or three or maybe sometimes even four um, implementers or organizations can come together and really focus on the problem that they really are, are um, prioritizing to solve. Um, and then, and then, in order to kind of help assure alignment and make sure that uh, we're all kind of um, perhaps like thinking about sh you know sharing the tools and the frameworks that we need to to um, that we have available to all of these different squads, we have some committees and teams that provide um, technical guidance, strategic and operational support, project management support events like these to raise visibility of the work that's happening, QA support, um, documentation support, um, and, and really kind of setting the stage to help make coordination and collaboration um, on shared assets easier. Um, because my favorite quote, collaboration does not just happen accidentally. Um, it's not flicking on a switch. We know that it takes time, it takes planning, um, it takes, dedicating resources to look for and develop those opportunities, but also to actually make it happen. So what, what we're, you know, even though we're talking about 
collaboration, we know that oftentimes collaboration does not happen overnight, like I said. It might mean moving from contributing or coordinating work and resources to working on something shared and, and jointly um, in a collaborative manner. So I wanna just stop and pause there. And I want to ask everybody here to, you know, when we talk about collaboration, I wanna hear a little bit about what successful collaboration looks like to you. Um, so I have another Mentimeter set up for everybody. I'll put the link in the chat or you can go to menti.com and put the code 5850-6062 in your, in your um, into the into the little box that I know that you, shows up on there. And I'm gonna put the, the direct link in the chat. Um, just tell us here, like when you think about a successful collaboration, what does that actually look like? What does it take? What needs to be in place for collaboration to be successful? So we'll just give people a, little, a few minutes to just think about that, put your transparency. Yep, transparency. Shared priorities. People willing to share what is really meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. Good communication and a clear plan. What else, do, what, including shared priority in the organization's own roadmap. We're not even talking about the open MRS roadmap, we're talking about the organization's own roadmap. Open and honest communication, consensus building, leadership, trust. Oh, I like this. Appears like a gently moving river that ensures all boats, whichever way align, originally aligned, end up moving together in the same direction. Um, empowered participants, yes. Ability to work and deliver on a common goal, share experiences, workplace and successes, setting clear goals and documenting along the way, a shared commitment, um, strong coordination by our wonderful community director and product of, of product manager, Jen and Grace. Thank you for the shout out. Um, organization leadership committed to successful collaboration, um, using tools that are easily accessible to all parties. Commitment to, accept, to accept some delay, commitment to accept some delay to ensure the foundations are in place for broad benefit. Open communication and active involvement of all partners. Shared experience on best practice, having systems in place that make it easy to work together. Growth, maturity, allow for failures, make it safe to learn and improve, yes. Clear communication between teams, giving both part, part, parties um, listening and, and letting them be heard. Shared principles, depending on each other and benefiting from one another. Teamwork, this is fantastic. Foundational values, respect between organizations and people. Um, success being measured based on the ability of separate teams to develop shared asset. Shared, a shared platform and, and framework, awesome services. Yeah, so this is, you know, yes, we have to have some uh, be aligned on our technology, but then so much of this actually comes down to all of the different things that you're talking about here. Shared priorities, teamwork, shared principles, clear communication, having a plan, respect, depending on each other, allowing for failure. Um, I'm gonna keep this, this active so you can keep on entering what you want um, into the Mentimeter poll and I'll make it available at the end of the day. But I want to dive into um, some of these different um, aspects of it because you all actually sh shared, you know, hit on um, some of the very ones that, that we've actually been trying to make, uh, make strides um, in terms of making collaboration, greater collaboration possible and helping people move that needle from simply contributing um, share, you know, a finished 
share a finished shared asset, a finished product to actually building it together. So these are things like shared purpose and priorities, um, mutual trust and respect, um, having a sense of ownership, a stake in the game, um, shared decision-making, right? Empowering people to be, to make those decisions themselves, um, clear roles and responsibilities, shared tools and conventions, communication um, and shared resources. So what I wanna do is just touch on some of the things that we've been doing um, in the community to again, help smooth the way, help, help clear any, any, not all barriers, but clear some barriers and help make collaboration and building shared assets together easier. So, you know, having shared purpose and priorities, um, you know, this is making sure that not just our overall mission aligns with, you know, you as an individual, your goals, or as an organization, your organization's goals, your organization's values, but um, it kind of goes, starts to go a little bit deeper than that. Um, you know, not only are you, are you committed, are we committed to working together um, to achieve our goal, but in our squads, you know, those squads are working on implementer priorities. Um, and, and we have a few ways in our community to make it clearer, to make it more transparent, um, what we're prioritizing, what squads are prioritizing. Um, and what, what we're all working on. So we have a, a strategic uh, product um, dashboard with a rapid product roadmap where you can see who is working on what. Um, we have a community dashboard, which also shows like in terms of community and making, creating a safe um, welcoming environment and, and raising the visibility of the fantastic work everybody's doing. We have a dashboard where you can see what we're doing um, in, as a community. And then we also have a collaboration opportunities dashboard, which where you can see how all of these efforts actually align to the priorities that we have heard from um, digital health leaders at the country level. So that's some of the steps that we're trying to help um, in terms of making these shared priorities and shared purpose clearer to everybody. Um, communication. Um, Somebody mentioned it in the in the Mentimeter, where we're communicating openly. Um, we're using established communication channels so that you know we're not having too many siloed different conversations. Um, bringing together and and communicating what we want to do and how we're going to do it is um, is kind of the key to expanding adoption of any of our shared assets, um, along with decision makings. And this is something that we've actually tried to really um, push down to the squads and make these squads kind of, you know, their own autonomous groups that can make decisions about what they're working on um, and how they work on it. Um, make it themselves so you don't have to go through, you know, a bunch, jump through a bunch of hoops um, just to decide, you know, what changes you want to make to, to the code on the, on the fire module, for instance. You can just go to the fire squad. Um, shared tools and conventions. So these are things like we all are going to use, you know, a certain Zoom room for a squad meeting, or we're going to use Slack, or we're going to use Talk. Um, these are, you know, these are, or we're going to use GitHub, or we're going to use um, Zeppelin as our design tool. These, you know, just coming to agreement on the tools that we're going to use to build these shared assets, to communicate about the shared assets is a huge step towards making collaboration easier. And so, you know, some of the ways that, that some of the things that we've done over the past year or so um, is to actually update some of our community conventions and tools to make that easier. So updated, you know, updating, for instance, our communication conventions that talk about how we use the wiki, how we use talk, how we use Slack. Um, Grace has done a lot of work on, on clearing out um, our, our JIRA board and, and helping each and every squad kind of set up their own and use effectively their own JIRA board. But there's also, you know, all of those project management tools and infrastructure that we have in place that we make available to everybody so that squads and teams don't have to figure it all out or try to figure out how to support it themselves. Um, some, and then we have our code of conduct and our coding conventions. But the two, you know, two new kind of community conventions and tools that, that have come up. Um, one, we've, we've got decision-making plays, which kind of guide 
um, how decision making happens, you know, from the individual to the squad to the team to you know, overall overall guidance and leadership. Um, this really sh shows how you can help um, how everybody can actually play a role. Um, and lead our community, whether it's making the decision to um, get some help from somebody else to solve a single ticket, or going to our technical action committee with a technical approach and saying, hey, am I on track with this? What do you guys think? Um, and then we also have our open MRS style guide, uh, which you'll hear a, lo a lot more about in our next session around um, open design driven 3.0. So our OpenMRS style guide guiding how we design the new um, OpenMRS 3.x front end. The other, the other area that is really important for, increasingly important actually for um, working together as, as small squads and teams, um, as a group, small groups of implementers or organizations working on a shared priority, clear roles and responsibilities. Um, who is going to be, especially as you go more and more towards co actually collaborating, um, what does it mean to take on a certain role in a squad? What are the responsibilities associated with that role? Um, we've, we've taken a little bit of time and we've looked out across our different squads and we've noticed that there are actually um, a number of roles that might be called something different, but the responsibilities are generally the same. Um, and that these roles are being filled, you know, not only by community volunteers, um, not only by, you know, Grace and myself, but also from, you know, very talented, incredible people working with organizations. Um, and it's, it's really amazing to see so many organizations be willing to step up and dedicate um, resources, people's time um, to to making our shared asset, building our sh shared assets. Um, so this is really exciting, but we know that having clear roles and responsibilities will actually help us all work more effectively, um, both as a community and as a, in our squads. So we've taken some time and we've updated our community roles and responsibilities. These are the shared specialized roles that squads and teams really rely on to get stuff done. Um, so all of this is available on, on Talk or the Wiki. We can share some links so you can get to know these things a little bit better. But you know, these are all the different ways that we've been changing as a community to help um, remove barriers to collaboration, to make it easier for you to sit in the driver's seat and take OpenMRS um, to, where you, to where we think it should go, where we want it to go as a community based on country level priorities and and what you think um, is actually feasible from the technical side. But that doesn't mean, you know, this still kind of gets to some of those other areas that are so critical to have. Like once these things are in place, you know, we all kind of have this joint responsibility um, for working towards and establishing mutual respect um, and trust. Um, and, and through that, I think we can all kind of get to this point where we have shared ownership um, so that we all have that stake in our shared assets. And we work and we end, and not only in that shared asset, but in how we work together um, to both create that shared asset and to maintain it moving forward. Um, and related to that, you know, ownership can, can mean that we're willing to make an investment and share our resources in order to achieve their sh our shared goals. At the very beginning, I talked about how, you know, people were recognizing the, the value of having access to that talented pool of designers or senior developers who that are just here in the community, um, willing to come together and work on something. Um, when, when we're all kind of willing to make that kind of investment, that too will make it easier for us to build um, these shared assets together, whether it's a technical one or whether it's a non-technical um, shared asset. So um, I'm just gonna close by saying, you know, if we step back a little bit and look at the last couple of years, you know, we, we're finding that squads are really taking off. They're becoming so, they're just creating such amazing solutions. Um, and I'm just gonna keep putting the plugs in for our different showcases so that you can see what they've been doing. 
Um, and there are more and more organizations who are contributing to our squads, right? Um, so, so in 2019, two years ago, we had six organizations contributing to just three squads. Um, last year, we doubled that number. We had 12 organizations contributing to seven squads or teams. Um, I still haven't put the data, data together to 20, you know, to, for 2021. We're getting into that last month. So stay tuned to see exactly how many organizations are contributing to exactly how many squads and teams. Um, but we know that more and more organizations want to contribute, want to coordinate work, want to collaborate. Um, so that's why we've been making this effort to unlock um, these avenues for collaboration. But with all of this, you know, our community support is growing. Um, you know, in 2019, we had only three OpenMRS Inc. supported roles. Um, my own QA engineer, TPM. Now, you know, by the end of 2020, we had eight. Um, we're, we're, we're down to, to seven this year, but we're growing because we know that collaboration, those opportunities for collaboration and new squads are growing. Those new opportunities are expanding and, and we, we want to be there to help support that collaboration and to help everybody in the community um, achieve, achieve what you set out to achieve in those squads. Um, according to implementer prior, you know, your own priorities. So with that, I just want to end with, you know, some thoughts on like, how can you get involved? Um, you know, the, a lot of this is really high level. And when we think about collaboration, it's what that looks like for each individual and each organization may be a little bit different depending on circumstances. So um, I would love to hear more about how other people, other organizations are trying to, um, to work this out. Uh, what, do, what does collaboration look like for different organizations? So that we can kind of come up with some examples um, maybe and, and make them available so that people kind of have other models to look at. Um, so that's one way you can get involved. Um, come to maybe, maybe we can have an unconferencing session and dive into this, what, what collaboration actually, you know, looks like from an organizational perspective, where, where organiz different organizations strengths may lie, um, or we could have a birds of a feather session, um, or we can continue to, you know, have um, uh, come together in the community on talk or online. Um, there are a lot of, there are still a lot of different um, conversations to go to to address um, like this we we've come a long way um, especially since our unconferencing session last year but you know we still I think there's still a lot we can do to help um, help everybody in the community see practical examples of how this happen happens and recognize those organizations who are actually making it happen who can serve as models um, and who who are um, are you know, extremely valuable partners to, to the OpenMRS community. Um, so with that, I think it's the top of the hour. Um, I can't believe that I'm, we're actually wrapping up um, on time. This is great because usually that's, a, that's a, something we usually strive to do better each and every year is to start on time and end on time. Um, I'm looking forward to having more of these conversations around building shared assets, collaborating, um, and getting organizations more and more involved um, this week and in the future. 